Double Busters! My name is Andrew. I'm 28 years old and a hard-working salary man. I have a girlfriend who I'm preparing to get married to. Her name is Mindy. She's very kind and beautiful. Honestly, she is way out of my league, so I try my best every day to work hard and make her proud. This time, I have a plan to take her to a very expensive restaurant. We always go to cheap sushi restaurants, but as a man, I want to take her to a place that is expensive and delicious for a change. I've been saving up money for two months now, and I plan to use it all up for her at the restaurant. I've searched online for some comments about the place, and I learned the master is strongly committed to his work. He goes to the fish market every morning, and through his own route, he's able to get fish all the way from Hokkaido Prefecture to Kagoshima Prefecture of Japan. He must be very committed. I'm not surprised about the price then. I was very excited, and asked Mindy to go to the restaurant with me. Hey, Mindy, do you want to go to an expensive sushi restaurant next Friday? Huh? An expensive sushi restaurant? Isn't that a bit over our budget? We can go to a normal place. Oh, Mindy, why are you so kind? I've been actually saving up for two months now to take you there, so you don't have to worry. I remember you said you love sushi, right? Let's go! Thank you, Andrew! Then next Friday night it is! Great! And so, Mindy agreed to go. So Friday came, and I went to the sushi restaurant before her. I was honestly very nervous about my first expensive sushi experience. I'm here! Wow, so beautiful! Andrew, stop staring at me! You're embarrassing me! Come on, let's go! I'm wearing my work clothes. Do you think this is okay? It's fine, come on! I'm so excited! We went into the restaurant. Welcome in. Do you have reservations? Yes, my name is Andrew. The master came out, and he looked very scary. Honestly, he didn't look like the type to be doing customer service. I was super scared, but he led us into the counter seats. It was well above my expectations. The counter had a window that stretched the same length, and inside was a whole bunch of fish that looked amazing. We sat down, so we started to order our sushi. Master, we'll have tuna, sea bream, and bonito, please. No problem. Because I was nervous, I ordered things that I was very aware of. I was also worried if my saving would be enough, and the master was very quiet too. I just thought that was how he ran his business. I was only worried about the food being good, and to impress Mindy. Wow, this place is amazing! Yeah, you order things you like too, okay? Thank you! And so, the sushi we ordered came in front of us, and of course, the master didn't say a word. Oh, this is amazing! It's completely different from what I usually have! I said in a loud voice to Mindy, just so the master could hear us well. But the master heard this, and his attitude drastically changed. What is a peasant saying about my sushi? Huh? I want people that knows expensive food to eat my sushi! Um, uh, huh? I was honestly so shocked. Did I say something bad? I reflected on what I said, but I still couldn't understand. So I got the courage to ask the master himself. Excuse me, did I say something that offended you? What? Normally, people come here and ask for the okimari. What is this, a cheap restaurant? Okimari? You don't know what that is? Ugh, I hate ignorant people like you. The normal manner for places like here is to not order certain sushi, but ask for the master somakase, or the special ingredients. You don't order sushi one by one. And the way to order that is to say okimari. How could you order sushi that isn't in season? What? Uh, I'm so sorry about that. If I can add to that, your outfit is not fit for a place like this. Oh no, I knew it. I'm so sorry as well. I don't like young, poor, ill-mannered people like you. From what I can guess, you came here just to impress your little girlfriend, right? Uh, um... Then you came to the wrong place. Why? This place is not a place for poor people like you to come and show off. You should go to your normal cheap sushi next time. Oh, I made a huge mess out of myself. I'm assuming Mindy is as embarrassed to be with me. She must be wanting to leave me right now. But right as I thought that, Mindy, who was quietly listening to our conversation, opened her mouth. Master Tuna is in season from October to February. Sea Bream is November to May. Bonito has two seasons. I think normal people don't need to know this. Oh, you're a little bit more knowledgeable. 
And you made fun of my boyfriend for being poor, huh? He saved up for two months just so he could bring me to this amazing restaurant. Don't you think that is much more important? Huh. <laughs> and? Oh, you're still not going to change your attitude. You must have forgotten who I am. I'm disappointed in your service, Master. Huh? If I remember correctly, I think my father has given you a lot of money to maintain your sushi. Y your father? Then you're... And my father told you he didn't want anything in return. Just high-quality sushi and great service, right? I'm going to tell him exactly what we got served today. Please, anything but that. No can do. Please! The higher-ups that come here, they're mostly from my father's company, right? I'll tell them what happened too, and make them not come too, okay? Please, wait, wait! I don't care about the quality of your sushi, if you aren't fit to be serving your customers. What? I was honestly scared of Mindy at this point. The girl I knew to be very gentle and calm had turned into an ogre. Is it freezing in here? I was surprised she was involved in some way to this shop, but I was more surprised about how the master's attitude had changed. It's acting like he was in court for murder. His attitude changed so much, he wanted to serve us more sushi. But since Mindy would not listen to him, the first sushi we ordered were the only ones we ate. When we got out, Mindy apologized to me a lot. Andrew, I'm so sorry. I wasn't hiding it or anything, but the master in that restaurant is the apprentice to my father. Uh, what? Your father's apprentice? He used to be such a good person, but I guess he changed ever since he got his own restaurant. Uh, I see. Well, even if he has top-grade fish, if his attitude towards his customers is like that, I think his restaurant will be over in no time. <laughs> I see. But I'm sad I couldn't get to serve you expensive sushi today. No problem. I'm just so happy you saved up two months just to make me happy. Thank you very much. I see. I was a little scared of you, but let's go out to eat something else, okay? Yeah! And so, a month later, we went out on a date again. Hey, Andrew, are you hungry? Yeah, let's go somewhere to eat then. How about over there? This place? This is the cheap sushi place, right? Yeah! Uh, no, no, we can go out to somewhere a little more expensive. Mi it's okay, come on! Mindy dragged me into the sushi place. Welcome! Uh, huh? Um, sorry, a table for two? Yep, for two, please. Y yes ma'am. That staff was a little strange, don't you think? Oh, did you forget? Huh? That was the master from before. What? Apparently, once Mindy told her father what had happened, her father became furious and used his power to stop the high-quality fish from coming to his restaurant. And so, his quality dropped, the customers left, and he went bankrupt. He has so much debt that he started to work part-time at this cheap sushi place. I learned the importance of wealth, but at the same time, I learned that becoming arrogant and forgetting your true self is a very bad thing. Trouble Buster! I'm Hikari. I'm a hotel manager. I've been working here for almost eight years, so I know my way around the hotel industry. The president of the hotel I work at is Mitsuha Asahina. She's a horrible boss. She treats employees like slaves. I'm used to it because I've been here for eight years. She's the number one reason why new employees quit. Here's some things to know about President Asahina. One, she puts herself first. Two, she fires anyone who disobeys her. Three, she believes in survival of the fittest. All right, I've complained enough. I don't mean to insult my boss, I just can't think of a better way to describe her. One day when I came to work, I saw President Asahina yelling at a homeless man in front of the hotel. I came closer to see what was going on. Hey you! You smell awful! You're the scum of the earth! 
stay away from my hotel. You're an eyesore, you homeless trash! She was verbally abusing him. I rushed over to ask President Asahino what happened. What's wrong? This homeless man was begging me for water. He's filthy! Hikari, get rid of this homeless trash! That's an order! Huh. President Asahina left quickly after that. When I looked closely, the homeless man looked weak and worn out. I thought he might die if I left him like that. I quickly brought him in and sat him down in the lobby. I gave him some tea to go and the rice ball I brought for myself that morning. Are you okay? What's your name? Are you hurt or sick? Even though he seemed tired, I ended up asking him a lot of questions. It turns out his name is Nakagawa. He thanked me with tears running down his face. When I grabbed the phone to call the homeless center, What do you think you're doing? I'm about to call the homeless center and ask them to take in the homeless man. What? Don't tell me you let the trash into my hotel. He's resting in the lobby. He looked weak. I couldn't just leave him like that. You let him in the hotel? Do you understand the severity of disobeying my direct order? Oh, oh but I think if I left him alone, he would have died. Whether he lived or died is not the issue here. This is about you disobeying my order. I haven't disobeyed you. It doesn't seem that way to me. That's enough, Hikari. I'll have you suspended for disobeying a direct order from the president. I'll contact you with the details of your punishment later. What? I started getting angry too. Oh, within reason, of course. I still think that if I see someone on the brink of death, it's my duty to try and save them, no matter what the president says. Trouble Buster! That's why I thought it doesn't matter what the president thinks. It doesn't matter. Mr. Nakagawa must have sensed there was a problem, because he bowed deeply and then left the hotel on his own. Mr. Nakagawa, I'm about to call the homeless center! I called out to him, but it looks like he couldn't hear me. After that, I gathered up my things and went home to start my suspension period. The other hotel employees soon found out about my suspension. And they held a strike with Saito as their leader. They had a list of demands for their strike. An end to manager Hikari's suspension. Improvement of the work environment. President Asahina's resignation. President Asahina was livid. I don't care if I have to fire all of you! Defying me is a serious offense, especially you, Saito. I'll have your head for this. I can easily get new employees without you. I'll drive all of you out of my hotel. President Asahina didn't give in to the strike even a little bit, and instead pushed the employees more. I think she's actually in a tough spot, though. It seems hard to run the hotel all on her own. She probably has no idea what to do from here. Oh well, worrying about it from home while I'm still suspended won't change a thing. The next morning, I woke up, had coffee, and watched the morning news as usual. On the news, I saw video footage of President Asahina verbally abusing that homeless man yesterday, being aired on TV. The news anchors watching made comments like, Oof, how awful! I can't believe this actually happened! I burst into laughter after seeing that. Someone was secretly filming President Asahina yesterday and posted it on social media. It went viral and even ended up on the news the next day. Hikar, 
occurring? What is going on? Explain! What do you mean? I've just been at home serving out my suspension. I mean on the news. Why am I on TV? It looks like someone posted a video of you online. What? Don't act dumb. Do something about it. It's too late now. It's already gone viral. Besides, aren't you glad you're famous now? What? You better watch your mouth, Hikari. Hold on. I I'm getting a call from our parent company. Uh, what should I do? What's wrong? Oh, uh, our parent company wants me to resign. And for some reason, they want to make you the next president of the hotel. Did you do this? Is it because of the news, social media, the strike? <laughs> Things have already gone that far. What do you mean, already? Care to guess why things went south so suddenly? What? what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're trying to say. I see. That homeless man you were yelling at yesterday, that was Mr. Nakagawa. Mr. Nakagawa? Yes, Mr. Nakagawa! Uh, who is that? I guess just his name means nothing to you. He's the son of the CEO of Nakagawa Financial Holdings. He left the business world to pursue a career in law enforcement. Nakagawa Financial Holdings? Nakagawa... What? No. No way. You've got to be kidding me. It's true! That homeless man yesterday was Mr. Nakagawa! So you're saying that homeless man went back to his father's company just to get revenge on me? No, I don't think it was for revenge. Yesterday, when I was at home serving my suspension... I got a call from an unknown number. I wonder who it is, I thought. Turns out it was that homeless man, Mr. Nakagawa. I was stunned. Mr. Nakagawa went back to his father's company with plans to reform it. He wants to help the company better meet the needs of the future generations. Our hotel is part of the Nakagawa Financial Holdings Group's plans for reform. When he was working at a police station, he was able to talk to locals and was moved by their kindness. He wanted to move towards a more digital future, but keep in mind the feelings of more traditional people. He was pretending to be homeless on purpose to get a better understanding of poorer people's struggles. No one saw it coming. Mr. Nakagawa's great acting skills had both of us completely fooled. You yelling at a homeless man yesterday had a shocking turn of events, huh, President Asahina? Ugh. I, I guess so. It's crazy. I said some awful things yesterday, didn't I? Yeah, you really did. I didn't mean what I said, though. Oh my god, this lady's unbelievable. Maybe I can still fix things if I tell people I didn't mean it. Nah, no way. Yeah, but no chance. Well, nope. Later. President Asahina was fired right away, and I actually got the role of being the next president. I worked hard in the hotel industry, and I'm very knowledgeable. But to think I'd actually become the president. Nakagawa Financial Holdings assigned an expert in business administration to train and support me. The leader of the strike, Saito, and all the other hotel employees gladly came back to their jobs. We're going to make big changes to improve the work environment. President Asahina was shocked to see Mr. Nakagawa in a nice suit. She didn't resist anymore when she was asked to resign. After that, she left town and tried to start her own company, but failed. I heard a rumor that she's homeless now. According to Mr. Nakagawa, he wanted to put me in charge of business administration because I put other people's needs before my own. Of course, I'm ready to take on this new role. 
there's one more reason why I'm so motivated to work. The truth is, I just started dating Mr. Nakagawa. He asked me out the other day. I'll try my best not to let anything get the best of me. Trouble Buster! My name is Amy. I am just an average worker. My boyfriend James proposed to me, and I should be having the time of my life. But there is something that is bothering me about marriage, and that is... Hey Amy, you haven't responded to my proposal yet. Yeah. Hey James, I haven't told you something yet. What is it? Actually, I don't have a father. He ran out of the house when I was little, and since he didn't pay us any child support, my mother worked really hard to put me in college. Wow, really? Your mother is amazing! Yeah, and one more thing. She works at a salon. She's had her own shop for about 10 years now. I really respect my mother since she raised me all by herself. But I understand some people have negative feelings towards people who work night jobs. I needed to tell you beforehand. Oh, just that? It's fine, I don't care. And my parents don't care about those stereotypes at all. Really? Yeah, and isn't it amazing how she's been running her own place for 10 years now? I can't do that! I'm really glad you said that. I want to become close to your mother as well, so thank you for telling me that. But I would never hate you or take back what I said to you about the proposal because of that. I'm really glad I met someone like you. Thank you for the proposal. I want to be with you as well. And so we got married and became husband and wife. But even though he said that before marriage, once we did get married... Hey Amy, I saw your mother with a guy again. She must be crazy to be hanging out with guys turning 60. <laughs> That's her regular customer, Mr. Murphy. They went golfing. He isn't her boyfriend or anything, and his wife went too. And could you not speak badly about my mother? Hey, now! I think if your mother showed off her tits, they might just die! <laughs> Anger meter, 30%. I told you! Her store is not like that! You grew up with the money she got from getting close to men, right? You need to thank those gross men! <laughs> I do thank her regular customers, but what is with your attitude? What are you trying to say? Nothing. I didn't have any poor people around me, so it's all so funny. Anger meter, 60%. I'm going to show this message to your parents. I showed them these in the hopes they would scold him, but they did, on the other hand, said, How about you let her retire? We have nothing against her job, but I kind of get why James thought so. You have something against her job, too. Whether she continues her job or not is up to her. If he had told me he had some issues with her working at night job, I could have told him that he had those prejudices I will not marry him. But if I get a divorce with him now, my mother would blame herself for it. As I pondered about this, one day when we were out for dinner and on our way home... Hey, how about we go to your mother's store and get a drink? Never. You're gonna say something horrible. Hey, I'll do my best not to. Do you think I'm the type to say that to her face? Yes, I do. Ugh, just a little, okay? If she seems busy, we're leaving. I'll be a good boy. <laughs> He's gonna mess things up 100%. And so we went to her store. I haven't been to her store in a while, but seeing all the old faces still there and the atmosphere of it all, it made me feel relieved, much like how I feel when I went back home. Oh, hey, Mr. James and Amy. Glad to see you here. Hey, Mr. Ned, could you scoot over so they can sit here too? <laughs> hey, please don't shove me. Amy, congratulations on getting married. You were so little, but to know you've got married. Mr. Ned, it's been such a long time. James, he gave us a gift, you know? Thank you very much. Thank God he didn't say anything stupid. All the customers seem like regulars, too. You too, do you want something to drink? Amy, you'll have a highball, right? What about you, James? Drinks on me. Thank you very much. I'll have a beer then. We went to drink with the other customers, and when I was beginning to relax, James started to become very drunk because he knew that the drinks were all on my mom. <laughs> Yay! Your mother is crazy! <laughs> um, James, what are you saying? Her job is to seduce men, right? She must be crazy! <laughs> you can't do any other work, right? That's why you work here? You look like you've never even touched a computer! Wait, do you know what a computer is? Anger level 100%! I can't take this man anywhere! Why did I think to trust this man's words? Trouble Buster! 
I've had enough! James, I was told not to tell you by mom, but... Amy, you don't have to say that. I'm fine, okay? I can't take you talking about my mother like that! You listen up! The house you wanted to buy so badly by making a loan? The person who helped out the most was my mother! Wow! <laughs> Remember how you couldn't create a loan for the house because you were unable to pay off your credit cards when you were single? And even though that was your fault, you and your parents really wanted that mansion super badly. And so I asked my mom for her advice, and she let me borrow the entire down payment just so we could get the loan. My parents said they would help out too! That doesn't matter! They said they would, but they didn't, right? Because of their savings or whatnot? They just said it! Uh. Night job? Saloon? Yeah, but does that matter? If your child needed your help, are you willing to do this for them? Amy, you've grown up so fast. James, I know you really love cabaret clubs too, so don't say that about her either. I've never been to a cabaret club. Be quiet, old man. What? I've seen you before at a club called Trouble Club. You really loved a girl named Lily there, right? You were there every week. Why do you know that? Oh, Mr. Ned is a famous executive of the cabaret clubs around here. <laughs> no, I didn't do anything. The girls at the place worked very hard. And I didn't care that you went to cabaret clubs, but every week? How do you have that money? Um... I need you to tell me the truth once we get back. We're going. Now. I made him talk once we got home. And for the girl named Lily, he used up all the savings he had from a single age. And even started to use the savings we made for the two of us. And from their conversation... Marrying my wife was a mistake. I want to run away with you, Lily. That's what he said. Gross. With the incident at the saloon, I decided then that we were getting a divorce. He begged for my forgiveness, but I ignored him and prepared the papers and went to his parents to talk. His parents were furious that he used the savings we had for the two of us. They scolded him and said he was going to pay alimony for what he did. But a shocking truth came out. Turns out he had quit his job and told no one about it. He was really trying to run away with Lily. She doesn't like him, and their messages are honestly straight out of the sales textbook. James signed the papers while being glared at by me and his parents. His parents then paid back the money he used up from our savings, and I received that as his alimony. A few years later, I gave up on finding the right guy to get married to. So I went back to the office and started working hard. My mother was about to retire from her job, but her regular customers persuaded her to keep doing what she did. But her regular customers are getting old too. And because their doctor tells them to stop drinking hot tea, and they bottle keep sports drinks. The saloon has become more of a cafe for old people. But that seems like the perfect place for my mother and the rest of the regular customers to be in. Trouble Buster! My name is Akashi. I'm married to my wife Mariko for two years now, and we haven't fought once during this time perhaps because of our calm personalities. Tonight was the first day we could rent a movie we were looking forward to seeing. We stopped by a video store after work and watched at our leisure on the couch after dinner. We drank a bit and we were starting to nod off when at that moment. What? Who could that be at this hour? Maybe a drunken bastard got his house wrong. I'll get it. You're probably tired from work, so you stay there. No, wait. It's dangerous, Mariko, so I think you should stay here. But still... I'll shout if it's a suspicious person, so in that case, please call the police. I went to the door and looked through the peephole. Then, I saw two men donning suits. One was middle-aged, with the first signs of white hair. The other looked about the same age as me. I opened the door with the chain still locked and spoke to them. Um, how can I help you? We apologize for intruding so late. Please, don't be alarmed. We aren't suspicious people. Anger level 3 out of 10. You're one to talk. You seem very suspicious to me. We are the police. We understand it's an ungodly hour, but we have come because of a sudden development. Here's our proof. No matter how hard I look, it looks like a commuter pass to me. My mistake. Here it is. This time it's undoubtedly my badge. Even dropouts can become police officers? It's real. This is a real police badge. Look over there. Can't you see the police car parked? That's the car I drove to come here. Is... is that so? Are you still suspicious of us? Shall I prove it by letting the siren do its work? No, 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 not at all. I believe you now. Good grief. Without further ado, we would like to have a little talk with your wife, Miss Mariko. So, would you please call her over? Anger level 6 out of 10! Wait, Mariko? 
I doubt there's anything Mariko would like to say to the police. Akashi, it's all right. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, gentlemen. M mariko I told you to wait in the other room. We don't know if these people are the police. They're so suspicious. Miss Mariko, I presume? We're sorry to trouble you, but would you be so kind as to come with us? Of course. Now, hang on just a minute. This is all going way too fast, like an entire drama summary, and I can't think straight. There's a chance I'll come home late, so you go to sleep without me. Don't worry, honey, I'll see you tomorrow. B -b Mariko! God damn it, what a day, what a day! Anger level 9 out of 10! Mariko, who'd changed from her pajamas into casual clothes at ungodly speed, got in the car with the two officers and disappeared to where only God knows. I could only stand helpless as I was left alone in my house. Police officers coming at this hour to have a little talk? Something's wrong here, god damn it! I can't believe it, but could my Mariko be... My mind started flashing visions I did not like at all. There's no way. Did Mariko do something risky that happened to break a law? No, 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 no. There's no freaking way that someone as kind and innocent as Mariko would do something illegal. I believe in Mariko. I forced myself to go to bed, but of course my eyes were completely alert and I couldn't sleep a wink. So I stayed up and waited for Mariko. A few hours later, sunrise was just around the corner, when I finally received word from Mariko. Akashi, you're asleep, right? I'm so sorry you were startled. I'm going to be escorted home by the police, so you need not worry. M -m mariko Are you alright? You can come back home? Oh, I'm so happy! You're awake? With what's happening, how could I ever fall asleep? I guess that's true, and you have work tomorrow. I have a secret that I haven't told yet. Would you mind listening? Uh, of course I don't. It has something to do with tonight, right? Anger level 10 out of 10. Explain to me why the police came to you at this freaking time. Tell me everything, Mariko. Trouble buster! Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. Actually, the perpetrator of some crime was captured recently, and I was interrogated as someone who was involved in the incident. You were involved? When I was still a university student, I was looking for a part-time job, and a friend of mine recommended one to me. But after I heard what kind of job it was, it was clear it was associated with a scam group that lied people into giving them their money. To give a few more details, it's the kind of scam where they call the elderly. I always thought places like Izakaya's were the only part-time jobs university students recommended to each other. Why on earth were they connected to a scam group? What a scary, scary friend to have. I, of course, refused the job and reported to the police on top of that. They invested the group and my friend was also arrested, but many of them weren't tried because of a lack of evidence. My friend and the group of scammers found out I was the one who reported them, because it was right around when I refused the job, and they started to chase me down. They weren't tried, which means they were released immediately, and without bail. Yep. My friend after being released came to my apartment and screamed, You stupid bitch! I'll freaking kill you! in front of my door. It was really scary, so I moved immediately. I'm stupid, aren't I? Of course they'd find out it was me who blabbed right after I refused the job offer. It seems the scammers severely scolded my friend because she offered me the job. Out of hatred, she always found out where I lived, no matter where I moved to. This is too scary. Scarier than Sadako. This is borderline horror shit. But hear this. It's finally done with. While you'd think she breaks ties with the group after, she appears to now be one of the leading members. This time, a different source caused the police to investigate them again. This time, there was solid evidence against them, and the officers said that the judges tried them. And according to the results in court, it could be several years before they're released again. This should be the end of all of this. Wait, is this why you seemed to move so often when we were dating? I see now. Yep, it was so my friend and her entourage wouldn't find me now. When we were getting married, remember we had that talk about which family name we'd set it to? This is the reason why I went with yours. And you can be transferred, right? So I didn't think there was anything wrong with getting married. But it was still something I should have told you about. I'm so sorry. I dragged you in despite my efforts not to. This isn't something you should apologize for. Besides, it must have been so hard for you to carry this all on your own. You really did your best, honey. You're not mad? But I didn't say anything, and I could have gotten you in great danger. I do wonder why you didn't think to trust me in this. If I were in your shoes, I agree, I wouldn't tell you either. I could bring you into this because I told you even. Kashi, thank you, I really didn't think you'd say something like that. And 
I'm sorry. I admit, I thought you were the culprit of a crime. Say what? Visions of you in handcuffs, visions of me paying you visits at the jail, my imagination took off in a negative direction. What presents of food would make you happy? Are there any foods that aren't allowed? I was thinking about all of this. Oh, come on. I'm telling you I never did anything that would get me in handcuffs, but <laughs> should that ever happen, you divorce me, all right? <laughs> well, that should be normal. Huh? LOL, I never had the slightest dream of divorcing you. But listen, Akashi, I don't know how many years it'll be exactly, but someday my friend will be released. There's a chance she'll bother us again then. In that case, maybe you should think about divorce. Over my dead body! In any case, it's far more dangerous to be alone again. Next time, I'll be there with you, so I'll protect you when I can. And when we can't, we're gonna run away together. On oh God, I'm so glad I can be transferred, lol. I think I should apply for a position overseas, lol. Oh, Kashi, thank you. Afterwards, Mariko came home safe and sound. Whether she was relieved when she saw my face, I don't know, but she started to cry, and the tears were so contagious. The police officers were staring at us like we were a couple of crackheads. Later, the people who were bothering Mariko were found guilty and sentenced to several years in prison. How they were captured was just like last time. And not only were they a scam group that targeted the elderly living alone, but apparently a great number of people from this quite large gang were arrested and made the news a few times. Mariko would become sad and disturbed, so I turned the TV off whenever people were talking about it. Whether she's relieved that she finally told me everything, I'll never know, but I think she's livelier than she was before. My company might actually send me away abroad to gain experience too. Then Mariko would be able to live to her heart's content, right? Troublebusters! My name is Akashi. I'm an office worker enjoying the sweet blossoming of my independence. Right now I live alone in a mansion, but I'm to leave for it for a while because my job was sending me abroad. Even if it was a business trip, it would be a short one. I left my contract with the mansion active so I could go home soon after returning. It was on a particular day, after some time had passed since I started working abroad. I had a number of unanswered calls on my phone. Huh? What's this? The calls were from the landlord of the mansion. Before I went abroad, in case of emergencies, I had given him my cell phone number. Hello? How can I help you? Ah, Mr. Akashi? I actually have something to tell you. What is it? There's been complaining from other tenants that they can hear the sound of a child crying. What? I suppose you're aware that I live alone, and I'm currently on a business trip abroad? I am. But I thought it strange because there have been numerous complaints. Mr. Akashi, are you lending your room to anyone? Believe me, sir, I am not! What is the meaning of this? I see. This is bizarre. Well, there's a chance that it could be some kind of mistake. Couldn't the sound be coming from some other room, and not mine? There's always that possibility. Or perhaps, just maybe, your room is hosting a nightly party of ghosts and spirits. Please don't say such spooky things all of a sudden. I'm sorry to barge in on your busy schedule. I'll check to see if the party is still going on. I hope you don't mind. What did I say about the spooky stuff? And just what are you gonna check? What do you mean you hope I don't mind? That night, from far away America, I imagined what was going on in my home back in Japan. Just think, could there be a ghost in my room? A child's ghost? Could the ghosts of a mother and daughter be haunting my room? Attracting black cats, screaming and making noise? This was so spooky. I was unable to sleep much that night. Mr. Akashi, good morning. I went to check your room since we talked the other day. And how did it go? There it was. This thing. What was... What was there? A g... <laughs> ah! A ghost! A granny. A g granny? Yes. A young granny came out of the room with a child. Who the hell are they? I'm glad it wasn't a ghost, but who are they? I asked her that, and she answered, I am Akashi's girlfriend, and he left me in charge of the flat until he gets back. Do you recollect anyone like that? Like hell I do! This is too much. Who the frick is that old lady? I see. I will try to extract more details the next time I see her. Newsflash! Turns out my flat, which should be empty, 
was occupied by a lady I didn't know and her child. Oh, what a day. The sheer creepiness of the situation made me gag with fear and disgust. Hey, Akashi. You're looking a few shades bluer this morning, bro. Blue like a boiled parrot's egg going bad. <laughs> this bloke is Michael. A very cheerful guy and a bit of a chatterbox. But he's nonetheless my superior. Regardless of how he is, he's very proficient. And other employees expect greatness from him. Hey, Michael. I don't feel well enough to keep up with jokes for today. Hey, hey, what's the matter? To tell you the truth, with long monologues of convenient Japanese... Oh, kaku kaku shika jika. Totally understand it all, dude. And now you've heard the whole story. For understanding everything so quickly. Arigato. Akashi, it's best if you go back to Japan, for real. A bizarre thing like that could get you in real trouble, you betcha. Easier said than done. I got work to do here. Watashi is your superior, Akashi. Mondai nai yo. I'ma do you shit like presto. I'ma talk to peeps like musto. And you get your ass back home like gusto. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. You suddenly sound like someone from Osaka. With Michael pulling a bunch of strings, I was able to go back to Japan pretty quickly. Akashi, best of luck to you. I'll be back. And this is how I set for home. Oh, Mr. Akashi, Mr. Landlord, who the frick are you? Welcome home, my darling. There stood a giant woman I'd never seen before, and a small girl that looked about seven years old. She was staying in your room up until now. Could you be... Miss Marina? From my part-time all those years ago? Aw, did you forget your own girlfriend's face? She turned out to be Miss Marina, who worked where I once had my part-time job. She was divorced with a child, and she was freaking ten years older than me. But she was very touchy, frankly, someone I didn't like. To be completely honest, she once confessed her feelings to me while I was working. I did refuse her, but it was impossible to see her again afterwards. So I left my job in a desperate attempt to flee. A few years ago... Akashi, darling, you love me, don't you? So I'll allow me to be your girlfriend. I'm sorry. But if you were the last woman on Earth with me, I'd choose extinction. I really thought I had refused her, but apparently, I still had some learning to do. Damn you, darling. I was looking for you for so long. I finally found you. Don't call me darling. Why did you break into my home? We're a couple, so isn't it obvious? A couple? A freaking couple? What have you done with the lock? I picked it using the power of love. You literally just said you picked the lock! Hey, Mom! Let's go back home! Shut up! You stand there and be quiet! <sighs> Miss Marina scolded the child, called Mimi, and she began to cry. No way. Could the child's cries coming from my room be hers? I finally pinned you down, only to find you weren't even here, darling. Instead, I cleaned your room for you and stuff. Oh my gosh! What the hell did you do to my room?! Um, I'm absolutely clueless over here, so would you mind explaining some things to me? I told him everything, and asked him to call the police. Miss Marina and her child were taken away into custody, but Miss Marina kept on saying, We're a couple, and wasn't cooperative at all. In the end, she was charged with residential burglary. But because she didn't steal anything and stuff, there weren't any more offenses against her, and she was released pretty quickly. No way I was gonna let my wasted business trip and cozy home slide by without making a stand! Oh, you've done it now! Trouble Busters, assemble! I hired a lawyer and arranged to destroy her in a counterattack. Luckily, according to my lawyer, if I sue her in court, it will be charged as a legal offense. But the problem was that Miss Marina was in love with me. Legal offenses aside, I had to find a way to stop her stalker-like behavior driven by her love for yours truly. If I want to escape her, I'll have to make her hate me for sure. I devised a plan. Then, to have a chat with my lawyer, I called for Miss Marina. Oh, darling, calling for me when you're so busy, you really do love me. Oh, lordy. Marina, honey, long time no see. You're still fat like a hog, I see. What? Akashi? 
Dear? I don't blame her for being surprised. I completely changed into women's clothes and acted as a homosexual to greet her. Oh my goodness. You, dear, are trillions of years too early to sneak into my room, you simpleton. You're making me angry. Akushi, dear, what's gotten into you? Nothing's wrong with me, dearie. This is the real me. Oh dear, I'm hungry. Let's eat a pork rice bowl. But there's no rice. How about pork that... Akashi, dear, stop this! No, your handsomeness going away. Honestly, dearie, you show no shame for being darn plumper than me. Don't come back outside until you've squeezed that blubber out of you. Do you hear me? <laughs> How cruel! So you thought I was fat and juicy, is that it? Isn't it obvious? Take a look in the mirror. Oh, dearest, I have no interest in girls like you. The cutest and fairest in the land is me, me, me. La-dee-da-dee-da. -da -da. Perhaps my dressing as a homosexual from head to foot and acting like one did the trick in shocking her. But she started to cry waterworks. Furthermore, she got mad at me, saying, If you're gay, make it apparent earlier, goddammit! You liar! You stupid scammer! It appears that all the love she had for me has disappeared. Oh, dearie. You think we're done here? Come on, darling lawyer, sir. Uh, uh of course. <laughs> My lawyer, who was waiting in the next room, came to meet us, trying his darndest to not burst out laughing. Forgive me, Mr. Lawyer, sir. What you did is textbook residential burglary. If Mr. Akashi sues you, is it fair grounds for pushing charges? The evidence of you breaking in is still there, dearie. Your hair was detected around here. And we gathered your darling fingerprints, too. And there was evidence on your child that could have been from physical abuse, wasn't there? Be warned, we can conduct investigations about that as well. What? <laughs> By the way, honey, you're here now, but what have you done with your daughter? I bet my sweet patootie you abandoned her somewhere, didn't you? How about that? About the residential burglary. That's up to Akashi, and if he wants to sue. You bet your sweet ass I'm suing! Taking me on as an opponent in court will make you tremble, honey. I'll make you rue that very day. You've been naughty! Ah, <laughs> uh, my apologies! Do you wish to proceed with suing her then? Obviously, Miss Marina, from start to finish, turned a few shades paler, and could do nothing but listen. I wonder if that was from the shock of getting sued, or finding out I'm gay. Later on, I sued Miss Marina with the help of my lawyer. There was solid evidence against her, and she was convicted and sent behind bars. And about her daughter, the true nature of her bruises were just as I thought they were. Enough for her cries to leak through my door, into the building. How terrible. Her daughter Mimi now lives away from her mother, in a child consultation center. Mr. Landlord, thanks for everything. I agree. After something like that happening, moving away is the best. It's still quite creepy, even if she's been arrested. I fairly got the compensation, and I'll use the money to move away. But still, Mr. Akashi, the fact that you're gay, huh? No, 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 that's not true! That was just an act! Really? Are you sure? Even so, it looked like you were quite experienced in that domain. That's not true! I thought her feelings toward me would dissipate if I did what I did. Just as I had planned, Miss Marina's feelings toward me have dwindled away into the abyss. With this knowledge, even after she's released, I don't have to worry about her stalking me. Well then, Mr. Landlord, I bid you farewell. I decided to leave the mansion. Luckily, I'm able to get back to work in America, so I think I'll stay over there a while. It was a crazy incident, but how I managed to fix everything has become a bit of a funny story around here. My work abroad is very fulfilling, and about finding a new house once going back to Japan, I think I'll do that slowly and surely. Trouble Busters! My name is Akashi. I'm a typical baseball-loving middle schooler. One day, on my way to school, this guy came out of nowhere and crashed into me with his bicycle. I jumped into the air like a scene from a movie and landed hard onto the concrete. The part which was not like the movie was that I wasn't injury-free and I broke my foot. Luckily, it was only a bone fracture. And the doctor told me that I would be fine if I rested. 
and put it in a cast. I wanted to recover quickly, so I decided to take some time off school. My teacher and friends messaged me every day about homework and my classes. So I made sure that I got my schoolwork done at home. That way, I wouldn't have a hard time once I got back. The problem was Mr. Saito, the P.E. teacher and advisor to the baseball team. Akashi, why are you not coming to baseball practice? You are the ace pitcher, we need you! Uh, didn't my parents get in touch with you? I broke my foot, and I need to rest at home for some time. Huh, I thought that you kids were spoiled, but your parents are no better. Don't skip school over a broken foot. Get yourself to school! Besides, having a fractured bone is a sign of weakness. Drink some milk and come to baseball practice. My anger level? 30%. That's just crazy! With your motivation, what are we going to do about next week's game? Um, we contacted you about that, too. We mentioned that no matter how hard I tried, my foot wouldn't recover in time for the next game. So I said that I would sit this one out. What? What do you think will happen if our ace pitcher sits out of the game? Our only other pitcher is our new member from the seventh grade. I understand that our team lacks pitchers, but how am I supposed to compete in the game with this foot? I mean, if anything, it's your aversion to train new pitchers that caused us to have so few pitchers in the first place. I can't throw the ball with my crutches! Don't go looking for reasons of why you can't do it. Forget your own pain. Do it for the team! My anger level? 60%! There's no way! This is not a story in a comic book! It's not Star of the Giants! I mean, I want to continue playing baseball. That's why I'm choosing to rest and heal now! I'll start practicing and training as soon as my injury is healed. I'm already doing everything I can at home. Oh, I see. I finally get it. You're happy as long as you get what you want. Huh? How did you come to that conclusion? You're talented, so missing this game won't matter. You'll get scouted by a famous high school and end up going to the state championships. But think about your teammates. It's not the same for them. If they don't compete well in this game, they won't be up for sports scholarships. Most of them only know how to play baseball. And if they don't get their scholarships, they might not be able to get into high school at all. Why do I have to be responsible for everyone? The team is important to me too, but I can't be responsible for everyone's futures. I can't compete with a fractured bone. That's just crazy! With your attitude, I won't be able to recommend you for a sports scholarship. Didn't you want to get into Travas High School? In that case, I won't need a recommendation from our school. If I don't get scouted by Travas High School, I'll get into that school on my own by studying hard. That's why I've been working hard on my studies too, not just baseball. I've had enough! I'm coming over to your house now! What? My parents aren't home today! Don't bring your parents into this. I'm going to take you to school, and I want you to get approval from each and every one of your teammates about missing the game. I'll allow it if you do that. He can't be serious! True to his word, Mr. Saito really came over to my house. I didn't want to answer the door. I wanted to pretend that I wasn't home, but I knew that that wouldn't work. With my crutches, I made my way slowly to the door and opened it. Mr. Saito then said to me, Get into my car! I'm going to take you to school. Don't skip school over a broken bone. He then pulled my hand forcefully. I then lost my balance and my crutches fell to the floor. I also collapsed onto the floor. I felt a sharp pain in my foot. Ouch! The inside of my cast hurts like crazy! Don't lie to me! You're just faking it! My anger level is 90%! I'm not lying! This is real! Don't touch me! Don't touch me, please! Take me to the hospital! Please! Call my parents! What? How about we get you back to bed? I'll help you. I just told you that I'm in so much pain! It's your fault that my injury is worse now! 
This time I think I've actually broken my foot. If it was just fractured, it would have healed quickly. That bad. Let's just get you back into your house, okay? What are you saying? If we go to the hospital now, it will be all my fault, right? That would be a problem for me. I'll get in trouble and my superior will be unhappy with me. I've had enough! I'll call the ambulance myself! Go away! Okay, I'll take you to the hospital. Jeez, what a day! So I ended up going to my doctor with Mr. Saito. During the car ride, Mr. Saito said to me, You fell on your own, right? Make sure that you tell your doctor and parents that it wasn't my fault. My anger level 100%! Forcing an injured student to go to school against their will is as outrageous as a teacher can get! I'll trouble buster him! As I had predicted, after my x-ray exam, I was told that my bone fracture was now a broken bone. My mother, who had rushed to the hospital and the doctor in charge, were furious with my teacher. What have you done? We had planned to take off Akashi's cast after his next x-ray exam. Because of you, he now has to undergo surgery. Actually, Akashi fell on his own. It wasn't my fault. Huh? Don't lie! Mr. Saito, are you lying? We have a security camera in front of our house, so if you are lying, we will find out. Um... I read your online conversation with Akashi. How can you blame Akashi for acting responsibly and resting to heal his injury? Instead of hurrying back to the games before his injury was fully healed, Akashi planned to make a quick recovery so that he could compete in as many games as possible afterwards. You disrespected him, and look what happened. I'm so sorry. I will inform the principal, and we will apologize to you once more. Do you understand the seriousness of the situation? Informing the principal is not going to fix this. We plan on notifying the police. What? The police? You injured Akashi due to your negligence and selfishness. Do you understand? Because of your irresponsible behavior, my ninth grader has to undergo surgery during a very important time for him. You just prolonged his time away from school. Do you understand how this affects Akashi? But don't you think that involving the police is going a bit too far? I'll have to quit my job if you do. Yes, please do resign. You don't seem to feel any remorse for your actions. I'm going to tell the other parents about this. There's a lot I want to talk about with the principal, too. Would you mind getting in touch with him for me? Um, now? Yes! Is there a difference between contacting the principal today or tomorrow? Um, do I really need to report the incident to the principal? What? Did you plan on getting away with not telling the principal? You just said that you would inform the principal. I'm sorry. I thought that you would forgive me if I apologized sincerely. Well, the principal is going to find out either way because we are going to notify the police. Please don't tell the police or the principal. Please, allow me to discuss the matter with you. I will pay for the treatment costs. Money is not going to solve this. Hurry up and call the principal. Mr. Saito reluctantly contacted the principal, and the principal, who was still at school, made his way quickly to the hospital. When he found out about what had happened from my mother, he became red in the face and scolded Mr. Saito profusely. And the principal apologized to my mother and me endlessly. He then got in touch with the Board of Education and told us that he would support us in notifying the police. Mr. Saito, who up until this point thought that the principal would take his side, became very pale. He pleaded to be forgiven. But the usually kind principal with a gentle smile glared at Mr. Saito in fury. My mother took the medical certificate written by my doctor to the police station. The incident became a hot topic on the local news. The public eye scorned the topic of bullying and physical abuse in our neighborhood and our school and Mr. Saito became very notorious on the internet. Naturally, Mr. Saito's family found out and his wife and daughter left him. He had no choice but to move out of town. He even deleted his line messaging account, so we really have no idea where he disappeared to. 
because of Mr. Saito, I had to stay at home for longer than I had planned, but my treatments and rehabilitation were finished by the end of the summer. I was able to watch the final game from the side bench. My teammates cried happy tears for my return, and I cried with them. I don't want to give up baseball, so I decided to study hard and get into Travas High School on my own and aim for the state championships. I bet that teacher is haunted by my face now, so me getting to the championships and showing my face around is the best way to get revenge. TROUBLE BUSTERS!